the Atlanta Falcons. They made a big deal that that is huge. Probably picked up the best move of the free agency, honestly. I think it's one of the best. But a little backstory on this. So former Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins, he tore his ACL last year and he couldn't finish the season. However, after becoming a free agent, the Atlanta Falcons and Kirk Cousins came to an agreement. They signed him to a four-year, $180 million deal with $100 million guaranteed. And some people was concerned because they're like, bro, whoa, 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 slow down a little bit. Kirk Cousins is coming off an ACL injury. Why are we giving him this much money? And if you ask me, bro, Kirk Cousins is worth every single penny that the Atlanta Falcons threw at this man because it is the perfect fit. And I'm a firm believer that when you find someone who can help your team and they're the perfect fit for them, you can't play around. Don't play around of, of trying not to pay them as much. You got to make sure you secure that person that's going to help take your team to the next level. Kirk Cousins He's going to take the Atlanta Falcons to the next level where they are right now. All of this young talent on the offensive end, Kyle Pitts, B. John Robinson, Drake London. These guys are, are all they need is a quarterback who can throw the ball 30 plus yards. They didn't have that over these past few years. Kyle Pitts, one of the best tight ends who was drafted in his class, one of the best young tight ends right now, didn't even get any love because he hasn't played with a quarterback who can get him the ball. We are yet to see what kind of skill this guy really has because he hasn't had that many targets. He hasn't had a quarterback who can put the ball to his chest when he needs it most and when he is wide open. I mean, the guy has moves. He moves like a wide receiver, but he's a tight end. B. John Robinson, I don't know what the hell Atlanta Falcons was doing half the season when they had him sitting out. Um, we weren't even giving him the ball at one point. So it, it was just a lot of madness going on. But you add someone like Kirk Cousins, who's actually elite, who has the experience behind him and can throw the ball over 30 yards very accurately. To me, that's damn good, bro. I think that's a damn good combination for the Atlanta Falcons right now. The only thing that somewhat concerns me about them is the fact that they don't really have an O-line. But here's where I find comfort in that. Because even though they don't have an old line, I still look at this like, okay, well, Kirk Cousins, this guy's been in the league for a good amount of time now. Played with the Redskins, played with multiple teams um, in his career. Any of those teams that he played in did not have a great old line. The Vikings, not really a great old line. He, he was still taking some big hits. He was still um, didn't have a lot of time to throw the ball and get the ball off at times, but definitely didn't have that early on in his, in his career. Probably the best offensive line that he's had was with the Vikings, and that wasn't a great offensive line. So it does comfort me a little bit is that a, a majority of his career, he's had to deal with not really having an offensive line, but yet he still made it work. And this guy has been aging like fine wine when it comes to throwing the ball at the quarterback position because, I mean, a lot of people, they talk about, oh, the ACL injury, but bro, hear me out, bro. I mean, the guy was on a tear before he got injured with the Vikings, was winning ball games off of comeback wins. He was leading the league in recept or, uh, throwing passing yards um, in the beginning of the season before he got hurt. The man was doing a lot of damage. And the main thing that I heard here from a couple of different people is like, oh, well, we paid him all of this money. Not only is he coming off an ACL injury, but this guy only has one playoff win. And, and that bothered me because I'm like, OK, I, I understand that Kirk Cousins only has one playoff win and he's getting this huge bag for it. But the thing that throws me off is you remember your quarterback, Matt Ryan, right? with Atlanta Falcons when he went on that playoff run in 2017. Prior to that playoff run in 2017, Matt Ryan only had one playoff win, but then he went all the way to the Super Bowl, took his Atlanta Falcons to the Super Bowl, had a damn good year. It's the difference in leadership that's going to bring out different things. So you shouldn't be judging Kirk Cousins about that one playoff win when a guy who had one playoff win took you all to the Super Bowl. It can definitely happen when you have the right talent and you have the right guys around you helping you succeed. So, I mean, any other quarterback in, in the free agency pool that you would have wanted, nowhere near as good as Kirk Cousins. Justin Fields, nowhere near as good as Kirk Cousins. Russell Wilson, which we'll touch on later on with the Steelers in a second, he had a pretty good season, but I still don't put him on a level of Kirk Cousins from what I've seen Kirk Cousins do in these past few years. Nowhere near it. Nope. So to me, I, I'm saying the Atlanta Falcons, bro, definitely the favorites of the NFC South. They already changed the odds on DraftKings and everything, bro. Uh, we looked, I, I was um, talking with a, a friend of mine, bro, and we looked at the odds of um, predicting the NFC South champions and prior to this trade happening because we kind of was anticipating this trade happening down the line but 
the odds were plus 100. So this is a huge boost. Like you like, okay, bet I hit, I struck gold almost. And especially if you know this trade is going down, man, they locked the pick at, at plus 100. They locked it up. FanDuel, that's, this is what I was checking. They locked it up and then they switched it to minus 105. And I'm like, bro, that's a crazy jump from a team uh, possibly winning their division to now you're like, you know they're going to win their division. So to me, I'm like, bet. I, I think the NFC South is locked up with the Atlanta Falcons. I'm happy it is the Atlanta Falcons. It's about time they're competitive again. Um, and y'all y'all be calling me bandwagon too. You know, I, I claim it, whatever. But this is one of the teams I cheer for, bro. I, I, I say I like a handful of teams and this is one of those teams that I choose and that I cheer for. 